Welcome to the Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you find yourself in this entire world, I welcome you. How are you doing, my friend, my warrior? I hope this week finds you well. No matter how close you were to the person whose death you are now grieving, you may feel some sort of regret over what you might have done differently when they were alive or what you could have experienced together had they lived. The if-onlys and what we call the woulda, coulda, shouldas can paralyze you if you let them. If only I had done this, if only I had done that, may be the record playing over and over in your mind. All of us live with some regret and guilt regarding the way we treated the person who died or was killed. You might have been the most supportive person throughout their illness, but you still wind up wondering what more you could have done. You find yourself feeling that you didn't spend enough time with them or didn't do a particular something they would have appreciated. You think maybe another treatment or operation would have worked. But on the other hand, you think perhaps you shouldn't have agreed to the procedures they did have that led to their death. Was it you who recommended a particular doctor or hospital or surgery center? And are you regretting your suggestion now because your loved one wasn't cared for in the manner you believed they should have been? Or perhaps they were ill for a long time. You were the go-to person who brought them to the doctors, treatments, stayed with them in the hospital. You went above and beyond, were there to assist with their physical as well as emotional needs, listening to their sadness and concerns. And now you are exhausted and you need to recover yourself. You've neglected your own health You've taken time away from your family, perhaps your husband or wife, and children while you were attending to your own mother or father. But the most interesting emotion that is now coming up is guilt for what you think you could have done or should have done. And in your mind, even after all you've done, you question if there could have been something else that would have saved them. You're having trouble accepting all that you gave was enough. Oh, and you probably are also processing feelings of relief, too. You might be thinking, how can I possibly feel glad that they have died? Is this a mixture of my own inability to keep up the schedule? Or is it relief that they aren't suffering anymore? You think maybe another treatment or operation would have worked. But on the other hand, you think perhaps you shouldn't have agreed to the procedures they did have that led to their death. But the worst is when your own family and friends have to critique everything you did. Not that they would help you, of course, but they want to put in their own two cents. 
Let me tell you right now, if your sister or brother didn't help financially to back you up for all the work you did because caregiving can be a full-time job, then don't you dare let them make you feel guilty. If they aren't jumping up and down with gratitude for your efforts, because they lived far across the country and couldn't spend months or years in your location simply because their job was thousands of miles away, or they just are the type of person who doesn't help but instead complains and judges, then block out their comments as unhelpful and negative. Toxic people do nothing to help you live a life full of positive energy. They make you question yourself and feel badly, and it isn't helpful to deal with their nonsense. Maybe you feel guilty and regret giving a young person the keys to the car and felt that might have been a bit premature. Then one night, they had an accident which took their life. You wonder, had you not done that, your son or daughter might still be here. Or you told them countless times not to go into that part of the neighborhood, yet they still did, and that knock on the door by the police notifying you of their murder is something that is burned in your mind. You are still angry with them for that, but you have a hard time saying that out loud because, you know, after all, you think, would that be fair? Maybe they wouldn't or couldn't stop their addictions to drugs or alcohol or gambling, and it changed who they were. It changed the people they hung out with. It changed how they were part of your family. And their decisions to continue in that walk of life contributed to their death. Sometimes you don't know who to blame. Them, the people who got them hooked and in that lifestyle, or yourself for what you think is your failure to help them recover. You might feel guilt and regret because you encouraged a family member to enlist in the Army or the Navy, the Air Force or the Marines, so that they could get a better education and have a wonderful skill. But you can't get that image of their flag-draped casket out of your mind. You wonder what they went through at the end of their life. You couldn't be with them. You don't know what was going on in their mind. You don't know exactly what happened, and sometimes you don't really want to know, because if you did, or could see it in your head, it might haunt you more than it already does. And while you are somewhat happy for the parents who did have their sons and daughters back home on leave, There is an envy and jealousy that your son and daughter is no longer here. Why was it your child who was killed? Perhaps you and your spouse decided to have children while in the service. You never thought it would turn out this way. The love of your life was killed and you are left to raise your children alone. It's difficult enough dealing with your grief. But now, you need to attend to your grieving children who can't understand why their mom or dad won't be coming home again. And they also want to know why they must leave their home and move elsewhere. Maybe one of your parents' homes for a time until you can get back on your feet emotionally and financially. And you hate all of it. You feel guilty that you feel the way you do. You regret the fights you had. You regret the hateful words you use when you scream at his photo, telling him how angry you are that he left you all alone. You feel guilty for telling him you hate him for getting killed. Maybe your special someone decided that life here is not worth living. They may have been having addiction issues, maybe depression, mental illness, or other stressful situations that, for them, was not repairable. You might feel guilty because you didn't see all the pain they were in. Maybe they didn't even show anything, and when they took their life, everyone was completely stunned. 
no one saw any signs. And perhaps you feel regret because you did see something, but thought it would work itself out. Someone else who was closer to them would take the responsibility to help them to get the care they needed so desperately, the counseling they needed so desperately, the medication they needed, the love they needed. You waited for others, and it never came. And now you regret that you didn't take the bull by the horns and handle it yourself, even if it meant being shunned or called ridiculous because others would have believed there was nothing wrong here. But you knew better. You might also be feeling regret for what you won't have in the future together with your special someone. You made wonderful memories in the past, but what about the future? And the sad part is, there isn't any. You were looking forward to your child's graduation, their wedding, and having grandchildren by them. If your fiancé was killed or died, you will never experience the wedding you dreamed of or the children you would raise together and all the fun doing that. If it was your spouse, you were looking forward to your first child, maybe additional children together and build a family and wonderful life together. Or you decided to wait a long time to have a child, and you miscarried, and now you're having a hard time getting pregnant again. You regret waiting all those years to build just the right career, and you wonder whether it was all worth it. But you wouldn't give to have that decision to make all over again. You regret that you didn't get to say all that you would have wanted to say before they died. You had it on your mind for so long, but never did you think the last time you saw them was the last time you would see them. And now you regret not having taken the chance when you had it. And maybe you feel guilty you survived and they didn't. Was it a car crash? Were you were the driver and they were the passenger? Was it a roadside bombing that killed or maimed your military buddy? Perhaps a firefighter that died and you and others survived that horrific fire. A police officer who didn't survive the shootout, yet you did? Maybe a drug addict who came back after overdosing, but your friend did not or even as innocently as having survived that difficult birth, but your twin did not. You feel guilty that you couldn't make it to the hospital in time. Perhaps no one told you the urgency surrounding their illness and you thought there was more time. Or you regret that you didn't have the money to go visit them when they were alive or the money to attend their funeral, and there are actually people who won't let you forget how you didn't attend. If you are grieving the death of a sibling, you are looking forward to growing old together, staying close, enjoying family time with your children and their children, and watching cousins get close. But maybe you spent the majority of your childhood fighting and being highly competitive And now you look back and wonder why you wasted so much time doing that. Now you can't make all that conflict right again. What about your grandparents? Some might be hundreds, even thousands of miles away, yet others are in your same town, even in your own home. As a teenager, you had your friends, and you concentrated your time and energy in their lives. Your parents or aunts and uncles instilled in you the thought that they aren't going to be around forever. And you let that thought bounce off of you. But now they are dying and you are afraid to visit the hospital. You don't know what to say, how to act, what to do when you get there. And you don't know how to ask how you should go about talking to them. It's uncomfortable. It's scary. Dying and death is not something you know anything about, and really, you don't want to know anything about. 
And there will always be people who won't let you forget how you didn't visit your grandparents or parents enough when they were alive. Or you didn't take care of them in the manner that those other people believed you should have. Well, let me tell you, there will be no pleasing those people, no matter what you did. They only see life through the negative lens, and you are fitting into that lens in their mind. Don't waste time accommodating their talk. It does you no good to listen or give credence to this nonsense. You must remember, you made decisions which you felt were the most viable for the choices you had when you made them. You cannot take them back, and you cannot feel guilty about the outcome. Even if you had the decision to make again that same decision, there is no certainty that the outcome would be different. So please remember that and draw comfort from it. Regret and guilt can spear your spirit and your heart. They can crush your joy, make you feel like you have to carry this burden forever, and I'm here to tell you, you don't. Exactly how is this serving you? What are you getting from torturing yourself over this? When you continue to carry around guilt and regret, we are not forgiving ourselves. This leads to self-hate, and we cannot live life in that place. Self-hate can bring on depression and deep-seated anger at ourselves, which will not serve us at all. Nothing good comes out of unforgiveness. When we stay in unforgiveness, we punish ourselves over and over, and no matter how long we do this, it will never change the outcome. What happened, happened. You must learn to love yourself again. You must learn to forgive yourself. One of the most effective ways to deal with this is to use EFT, the emotional freedom technique which I have touched on in previous episodes. This is a tapping method which touches on your meridian lines in your body. It has significant positive effects on your mental health, even on your physical health. When you see it done, you might think, oh my goodness, this looks silly. But when you feel so badly, what do you have to lose? I have been using EFT for years and it has profoundly helped me. I now use it for many emotions I'm dealing with, not only grief. What is so powerful about this technique is that once you learn how to use it, you are amazed at how much better you begin to feel. In the show notes, I will provide the links you will need to get started and to tap through your guilt, regret, and unforgiveness. I want you to watch them. Start today and tap every day until your pain starts to get lighter and lighter because you deserve a better life. You deserve to be more compassionate to yourself. You are entitled to that compassion and mercy. And while I know you hate that you had no control over what happened, are you willing to carry this severe burden around in your head and heart forever? How could that ultimately serve you? Next, I want you to go to the park, the lake, the ocean, the cemetery, with a pad of paper. Can you put on your earbuds and play soft, instrumental music while sitting on a beautiful blanket with a soothing drink? I want you to write a letter to them about all of these things that are bothering you in regards to their death. How it happened, what choices you made, what you wish could change, what you are struggling with, even the people you're angry with. You can do a lot of things within this letter. It is cathartic for your own benefit because it dumps out all that pain out of your gut, your heart, your mind, and your spirit, and you can now see it on paper. I encourage you to take this very important step when you're ready. 
it definitely hinders us from moving forward in our grieving process if we are constantly feeling badly about ourselves and about a situation that we perceived we could or couldn't have changed. We still feel so angry and guilt-ridden about it. When you're finished with your letter, you can bury these letters at the cemetery, attach them to a balloon, You can burn them or simply add them to your journal. The process is to let it all go. Release all those feelings that are causing you to stay stuck. You can even watch EFT videos after you've released the letter and work through the process while you're at the lake, ocean, forest, park, or cemetery. So what if people look at you strangely? What do you care? This is about you today, and you need it. So, let's get up, move our bodies. If you're in the car, wiggle in your seat. And dance, and enjoy the music, and have fun. for joining me today. Please click on the links in the show notes so you can learn EFT and put it into practice on a regular basis. And remember to be happy because you deserve to. I'll talk to you again soon.